<laughs> okay, so obviously the first question I want to present to all of you this evening is, uh, in, in your estimation, what is behind this incredible surge in popularity for Scandinavian crime fiction? And just to clarify, we have two Norwegians, right? Norwegian, um, Norwegian, and a Swede. Uh, representing the Scandinavian <laughs> countries tonight. And we'll, at some point we'll get into whether or not there's a distinction between Norwegian crime fiction. I know there's a distinction between Norwegians and Swedes. There's no question about <laughs> that. But, but between the representative crime fiction from each country. But, but what do you think uh, is really behind this, this renaissance, if you will, uh, in Scandinavian crime fiction? Yeah. Well, I think we are living in such a chaotic uh, world. And um, for myself, it seems nice to just sit back and relax and read this novel where I can find that uh, I know that the hero, he will uh, make uh, order out of this chaos. He will make justice. Um, so for me, it's the search for the truth. And that might Well, is the search for truth any greater in Scandinavia, though? Because, I mean, it's, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, because I think that's the, the reason most people read crime fiction, is they want order restored. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a comforting kind of thing. But, uh, mm -hmm. Lisa, do you have an, an opinion about this? Well, you know, it's in the contrast, really. Uh, in Sweden, we, did, we have had peace since 1809, when Russia took Finland away from us. <laughs> so, I mean, we are the perfect backdrop of a really, really violent crime story. I mean, it's in the contrast, right? It's in the clash. You have this perfect world. I mean, we Swedes, we think we're, we are the best, you know. The problem with the rest of the world is that they're not Sweden. <laughs> and to have a crime story set, in this perfect society, you know, it's bound to be exciting. You're right, because in Norway, we have And 
that started a, a, a tradition which, you know, hold on one sec, did, did everyone get that, who, know the references to who he's talking about? Yes. Okay, of course. Maybe, okay. It's an intelligent audience. Show <laughs> uh, and representative novels of theirs would be, I remember The Laughing Policeman was uh, turned into a very successful film in this country. But are there, what, what would like the, the most famous of their novels be? Police, police, the talk is loose. Yes. Put suit are good for us. Oh yeah, I read that one several times. <laughs> The first one, Rose Rose Song, uh, with, uh, with this American uh, woman being killed in Sweden. No. Okay, so, sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to make sure the audience was with us on that one. Uh, and, and so, are there any events, do you think, um, that, that uh, public events or, or of notoriety, and we'll get to past summer <laughs> later, uh, that perhaps rejuvenated interest uh, in the and, and in the Scandinavian public in crime fiction. Uh, that that because is it as popular within the Scandinavian countries as it now is overseas? Okay. So and and was the uh, the assassination of the president uh, the, the whole oh, of Holland. I seem to recall someone saying that kind of was a trigger. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah, at least for the audience uh, in the rest of the world. Because, uh, well, this crime, the crime fiction is all about the world around us, what happens around us, when uh, other literature uh, is about... Uh, uh, <laughs> well, it, it, it's uh, about the inner life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when Glockholm was murdered in 1999, uh, the world asked themselves, uh, what kind of country is this where the Prime Minister comes out the street uh, and being uh, killed and no one is uh, being caught? And then uh, the audience, the, the readers, they went to the literature to find the answers. What is uh, the Swedish uh, society about? What is the Scandinavian society about? And um, in the crime fiction, I might find some answers. Or on the contrary, actually. Because you can't find crime literature in a dictatorship, for example. Or you can't find crime literature where there's a war going on. You can only find crime literature in very stable democracies, very secure societies. I've, I've looked all over South America, there are no crime novels. And I spend a lot of time in Kenya, and people ask me, well, what do you write? And I say, crime novels, and they say, why? <laughs> <laughs> you can't find crime literature in, in Africa. I mean, people are dying of starvation. They don't need crime. So I think maybe it was the Olaf Palmer thing, but maybe it was the total opposite, that we are so secure now that we need to have some kind of, of, of violence around us in some controllable way. I don't know. 